dusky people, coconut palms, and the warm tropic waters of the Coral Sea. An ideal port of call for travellers on an island cruise aboard the Orient liner Oranse. It's Port Moresby Harbour, Papua, and a fleet of canoes form a welcoming committee to the big liner. Diving for coins is a popular and profitable pastime, and the shark-infested waters hold no terrors for these divers. In 1906, Australia accepted responsibility for the territory of Papua, New Guinea. The territory is in charge of an Australian administrator. Port Moresby is the principal centre of European life in the protectorate, due largely to its deep water harbour and the mountain ranges to the north and east which block the monsoonal winds. Moresby's broad, busy streets provide a traffic control job for this efficient policeman. The coastal people are mainly of Melanesian stock, and unlike many inland tribes, their forebears were rarely cannibals. A lineup of demure Papuan Aussies, camera shy but thoroughly charming. Speeding behind the billowing white canvas that propels the native lacquer toys is another exciting adventure for tourists. They're a far cry from the luxury craft that brought them to this island outpost. Though in years gone by, these outrigger canoes were the accepted form of transport in this area. Tribal dancers present a primitive spectacle. These dances have been handed down for generations and are part of the colourful background of New Guinea. Coda Trail and the Owen Stanley Ranges, names Australians will never forget. They bring to mind the dark days of 1942, with the enemy only 35 air miles from Moresby. The stirring Australian offensive and the inch by inch advance through disease and enemy infested jungle. Today, Bermana War Cemetery, in the shadow of the Owen Stanleys, is the last resting place for many of the men who made victory possible. Papuan troops, an efficient fighting force themselves take part in a ceremony of remembrance which is attended by the visitors. Through death has come Australia's strongest link with her territory to the north. For it was on the battlefields of New Guinea that a thin line of khaki-clad troops preserved her from the threatening enemy tide.